Good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is episode four of my training for ultra marathons. Now, this is all in preparation for three ultra marathons that I've got at the end of this year, the Rat Race Sea to Summit series. Uh, and as someone who is not good at long distance running, this is my attempts to document my journey from running sort of newbie up to ultra marathon runner. So uh, every week I do a nice long hilly run on a Sunday. Uh, and I take you along for the ride talking about some of the things that you might want to consider when training up for an ultramarathon. Now in today's episode we are going to be talking a little bit about nutrition leading up to an event on event day. Um, I thought I would also throw in a little bit about foot care and footwear. Um, I have come to Beacon Hill again as this is one of the hillier routes in Leicestershire so lots of uh, trail for me to discover um, and on the way round I'm going to take in Broombriggs Hill which is adjacent to Beacon Hill and the Outwards which is uh, on the other side so to vary it up just to keep it interesting really. Um, I've got 12 miles to do today and I want about 16, 1700 foot of ascent so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I guess there's nothing else to say right now other than let's get this first mile done and straight up broom bricks. All right, let's go. Watch on. <laughs> let's go. So broom bricks sits right next to Beacon Hill. Been around Beacon Hill thousands of times. Don't recall ever coming up broom bricks. I don't really know where I'm going. Oh well. All part of the adventure, ain't it? Okay, so, um, don't really know where I am. Okay, I'm gonna go up this hill just because it's the nearest one. And I need hill, so what's the worst that could happen? Okay, this is particularly, particularly hilly. So, this definitely has that lactic acid in the thighs kind of mountain climbing vibe about it even though it's only short. Okay, so first subject of today, nutrition, right? So I'm no expert at this. In fact, quite the opposite. Over the years, many, many events, uh, I've made a great deal of mistakes. <laughs> Loads of mistakes with regards to nutrition. Now, when uh, you talk about doing big events, the first thing that comes to your mind is eating loads of carbs, or carbo-loaded, as it's known. And the first thing you think of is pasta. I don't know why. So you think the night before, that's the thing to do, eat loads of pasta. Now, the result of this, I've found, is you feel bloated, full and heavy and it gives you quite uh, quite the bad case of the poops so if eating an, or overdosing on carbs or pasta the night before isn't how you prepare for a race how do you do it? now I have sought a little bit of advice from people who are qualified in all food things and they tell me that one of the best ways is to just increase your carbs and protein 10-15% for a week beforehand. 48 hours as in two days before, increase it a little further, only a little bit though, on both fronts. Uh, and then the day before, as in the night before your event, just eat normally. Uh, this will stop you feeling over full, lethargic and needing to take a poo every five minutes. <laughs> So when you're consuming extra carbs as part of your carbo loading, remember it doesn't have to come from food. Fruit juice, fresh, concentrate, whatever, is very high in carbohydrates and is a great way of topping you up. Uh, if you eat and eat and eat, uh, you're gonna feel over full, lethargic. Uh, and like I said earlier, in desperate need of a poop. <laughs> so yeah. Don't shy away from the liquid carbs, and I don't mean beer and wine, fruit juice. <laughs> okay, so Beacon Hill is quite famous for having a, a herd of Highland Qs. Uh, you can see them sort of over here. Uh, they're the big shaggy ones with the monstrous horns, ginger Qs. Uh, and they move them around 
and you can get really close to them even though they're giant and a bit scary looking they're completely completely harmless this is the top of Beacon Hill and is a great view you can see nearly all of Leicester from up here there's some miles and miles and miles it's amazing right so uh, four miles just about uh, I'm gonna go all the way back down to the car park uh, and then I'm gonna come and try and get into the outwards on the other side uh, and then maybe do it all again so training coming down hills is uh, almost as important as training going up them basically your knees take such a pounding from running downhill for a prolonged period of time I know that on Man V Mountain coming down Snowdon there is uh, some uh, miles of, of straight downhill running quite hard on the knees uh, but at Ben Nevis it's more steps and stones so you've got to be a little bit more careful coming down that probably be a much slower descent okay so we've just entered from here I want to go around the perimeter for maximum distance and then head back to Beacon for some more hills let's go uh, okay let's talk about what you might want to eat on race day itself and what to eat while you're racing or running <laughs> walking whatever um, in the morning don't go over the top keep it simple uh, arguably just have what you normally have uh, sprinkle a bit more goodness over the top of it um, oat jam toast bagels that kind of thing and remember to top it up with some fruit juice for those extra carbs mixture of fast and slow carbs is what you need uh, to last you well into your race now on your race itself you have to carry everything uh, with the exception of the pit stops that might be along the way um, so just bear that in mind you need to carry a few hundred calories at least uh, in terms of food snacks that kind of thing uh, and then in terms of hydration uh, I generally go for an electrolyte mix in my platypus um, this keeps you uh, good topped up with salt that kind of thing uh, hydrated well um, it also stops things like cramps sneaking up on you so with regards to quantity and frequency of food and drink I find little and often is the best practice um, not, not taking too much on in one go keeps you from getting stitch or belly ache or both so one of the things I wanted to talk about today is that it's Father's Day and I am a dad of two kiddies Isabel and Charlie now if you watched my video from last week you'll have seen that Charlie was in hospital I'm glad to say he came out on Wednesday and he's uh, sort of making his sort of a long recovery now sort of bouncing back in his own way he is every bit as cheeky now as he was before um, both my kids went to junior park run today I didn't expect Charlie to get round uh, but he did made me very proud um, it was great to see that Isabel said daddy I'm going to run my fastest for you today for Father's Day and she did and she ran a personal best over two kilometers in nine minutes and five seconds which is seven minutes 18 per mile pace in old money uh, which is outstanding for a little tiny eight-year-old um, so very proud of both my kids okay so that is the outwards done uh, not quite sure how far that was uh, oh route two 1.8 miles so that's perimeter of the outwards so I'm gonna head back over to hill country or power uh, beacon hill now uh, we can talk about the next topic which is foot care and footwear so with regards to foot care what I mean by this is lead up to your event and throughout your training keep your toenails under control keep them cut and filed down so there's no sharp bits rubbing between your toes there's nothing worse than when you start to get toes cutting into each other um, <clears throat> yeah file down any sort of rough bits or hard bits or calluses on your feet uh, and get socks that have anti-blister qualities 
um, on race day. Uh, put some compies in your bag and get these little silicon toe caps just in case you start to get rubbing in your shoes. They could save you on the day. With regards to shoes, obviously dealers choice on make and model. Uh, but I'm in sort of a decision point where I have to decide if I want to take running efficient shoes uh, with carbon plates and all of the running efficiency uh, advancements in them or do I go for stability uh, and lower my risk of injury but a much less efficient shoe. Uh, it's a conundrum. <laughs> um, today I'm running in Hoka Tecton X but they're an old pair and I want to get a new pair and I'm now just trying to decide whether or not I go for stability and security or efficiency and speed. Uh, <laughs> on the fence, undecided, but I, I need to get a move on because whichever pair I inevitably want to buy I'm going to have to break in. I'm going to have to break in soon. Oh my gosh, it's getting a bit warm now. Oh, so we are approaching nine miles, uh, just over a part run left. Uh, uh, it's never easy. Approaching 10 miles now, uh, leaves just over two. Uh, I'm doing the reverse of Broom Briggs, which is what I did at the very beginning of this run. Uh, oh, it's worse, it's worse now because <laughs> I'm fatigued. In a cow field. It's just a cow. Oh no. It's just a cow. I'll go this way. I'll go this way. Okay? Please don't chase me. Please don't chase me. I've been chased by cows before. I don't like it. What we got? One mile left. Brilliant, 12 miles done, great little run. Went to a few places that I've not been before. Great to explore. Now, I'm in the car park and the barrier's broken so no one can leave. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my ice cream on Father's Day. Um, if there's any topics you would like covering in next week's video, maybe aiming for 13 miles next week, pop them in the comments below and I will do my best. And remember to give the channel a subscribe because that always helps me out and I will see you guys soon. All right, Martel.